Cool. Easy enough. Yep. All right. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Organic Community Schools Board of Education on Monday, August 22nd. Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. A moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Call, please. Andrew Boulay? Here. Sharon Schiltner? Here. Bill Clark? Here. Janice Pasco? Here. Nicole Emery? Here. Heather O'Neill Roberts? Here. Jennifer Baker? Here. Mr. President, we have a quorum. All right, thank you. And before we get started with recognitions and presentations, I'd like to make a motion to add a closed session at the end of the agenda to discuss uh, negotiations. Support. Will you support it? Any questions? Comments? All, right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes. Uh, and then first up is our Chick-fil-A Leader Academy. Yeah, we uh, got a hold of Dennis and, and got him out here today. Um, you know, and, and this is kind of based on the program that we started and started talking about back in the, well, actually back in the winter uh, when Dennis and I first got together and started talking about some things and Dennis as you know has been a big uh, proponent for Algonac and a former Muskrat and has always kept his roots and he keeps in touch with me Dennis and I go way back uh, a lot a lot of years and um, his questions always have kind of been you know well back before his days at Chick-fil-A have always been you know what kinds of things can I do to help Algonac community schools how can I help <coughs> this you know how, how can I give back and you know there was a lot of times when they didn't really have a specific thing, you know, the support's great, but it didn't. And, and so when we started talking about um, some of the values that we want in our kids' leadership and some of the things that we feel, um, you know, maybe some of our kids are lacking and, and how contagious some of that stuff could be. And so I talked to Dennis a little bit about this, and he said, I think I've got an idea for you. And thus we started talking a little bit about the, Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy, and then I gave you kind of the Cliff Notes version of it last spring, but I uh, have Dennis here tonight, and Dennis, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk a little bit about the program, and appreciate you being here.
any person, external, beyond our four walls, takes us to this program. We partner with Chick-fil-A Inc. and Coca-Cola to sponsor this program called the Beer Academy. And we're actually promoting it at four or five different schools in this area. And they have not so close to Chick-fil-A Shelby Township, but this is hometown for me. This is, you know, these were my roots are, and so that, that's why we're here. And that said, what is it? So Beer Academy is a national high school music program. This is all across the country, not even just here in Michigan. Uh, Old Wayne helps the students develop lifelong leadership skills all within their class. A platform built to transform their schools and positively impact their communities. That's the fastball down the middle. We believe the world needs more leaders who will impact their local communities and ultimately we believe high school students are the answer. Uh, we're focused on impact through action. That's what makes us a little bit different and I'll talk more about that.
Oh, no. <laughs> that, that is true. I misspoke. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I, I, I think that, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the timing of the program, and Dennis and I have had this conversation as well, um, you know, with, with our students having gone through as much as they have in the last couple of years, and I, I just think that um, a lot of our students are looking for something, and, and they're looking for help from somewhere, and um, I truly think that this is a program here where, you know, we talk about wanting to teach our kids certain, certain values and want them to be good people out in the community, not just, we, we know we got good kids here at the school, but we wanna see them out in the community doing some things, and I think this is a great opportunity to you know, show what, show what kind of kids we do have out here. So I, I really appreciate everything Dennis has done, and um, you know, I think it's uh, gonna be nothing but positive for our school district, I think. Is, is our vision to take different kids each school year, or is it the same kids that start now, continue next year, and so on? And, and if you look at the way too, you know, that structure and when we were talking about the kids that we were looking to select or invite, um, you know, if you think if we're going to eighth grade even, you know, all of a sudden if you got five or six out of that cohort, because you got five and six in each grade level, you know, next year you got a new five when they're ninth graders, the next year you got a new five, and, and then pretty soon, you know, you're through, by the time they're seniors, you're through 30, 35 kids that have gone through that program out of about 100 in a class, and you know, it's, a, good chance to impact quite a few of them. Yeah, so we're gonna build as we go. One of my favorite things uh, to do and what I preach to our leadership team is we need a figure it out mentality. Uh, we're gonna figure this program out as we go. And we're gonna make it phenomenal. And it'll probably be a little better in year two than it was in year one, a little better in year three than year two. Uh, but we're gonna start uh, at the beginning, I think is a good place. And we're gonna focus on that grade off event. We're gonna focus on those, those I have a question for you. You said the cost is four thousand, but nothing for the Albanac. Correct. What about year two or three or four or five or whatever? Love the question. There's no fine print. Uh, we, <laughs> there, there's no charge this year, next year, the year after. Uh, that that's the spirit of the program is that we are sponsoring this. We are doing this for you at no cost. Uh, we know budgets are tight. We know that's a factor. Uh, Dennis, I appreciate you coming by tonight. Thank you very much, and thanks for the investment in Algonac. And um, like I said, I think it's going to be a great thing for our kids. Really looking forward to it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And up next, we have our Teen Health. Yeah, we got uh, Sandy Magden tonight from Teen Health. And if you recall, um, two years now back, uh, we started with uh, St. Clair Health Department had approached us about getting us some extra social work help and um, 
we've been lucky enough to have Demita working with our kids for the last couple of years. It's been a wonderful program. Um, I'm sure uh, Sandy probably has heard, I'm sure, and, and uh, but the numbers of kids that she's worked with have been outstanding. It's just incredible how many kids have relied on her. I've personally had parents contact me to talk about the difference that she's made here, and it really has been, uh, you know, in a time when we could probably use a whole room full of social workers. It's always nice to have some extra help. So, Sandy, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you talk a little bit about what you're here for tonight.
And, and with those uh, consent forms in the packet, what I thought was um, you guys could take a look at them over. Um, we'll, we'll put it as an action item on the September meeting, and certainly if you have any questions along the way, I can refer those to uh, Sandy or over to Community Mental Health. But um, they're there. <coughs> um, like you said, we'll, uh, we'll put it on in our September meeting. want to give you a little opportunity to look them over and make sure that you're comfortable with them. And I, I, I just, again, I thank you from, you know, Algonac Community Schools when I take a look at, you know, the numbers just in themselves. And again, we know that it's something that our kids need, but, um, you know, the logistical part of that, having that in your building, because, you know, in some cases, our, our students don't have the resources to go up to Port Huron or, you know, wherever they have to travel, but when it's right in the hallway like that, uh, it sure makes it a lot easier and a lot more accessible for our students. So it's it's really been a truly great program for us. And I just feel that we have been able to get that in the day. Yep. Uh, and the fact that it's there. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Are the days one through here at the high school or are there offices at the other? No, we're right here in the high school. Okay. I have a hypothetical, and I don't like hypotheticals. You probably don't <laughs> either, but I have one for you. If you have a student that comes to you in school and they find out they're pregnant and they don't know what to do or what not to do, I know you don't prescribe birth control, you don't do any of that. What do you tell that student? Anything else for Sandy? That's all good. Awesome. It, Thank you very much for coming tonight. Is, one more quick question. Is it open for kids outside of the Algonac schools? Do they come <coughs> in or is this exclusive to Algonac students?
alternatives. Mm -hmm. They're focused here. Dennis and Sandy, I, I'm sure that you probably would like to sit around for the rest of this exciting <coughs> meeting, but knowing that you both probably have very busy schedules, appreciate you coming in and feel free to leave if you'd like to. Awesome, yeah. thank you. All right. Consent agenda items. Would anyone like to make a motion? Make a motion that the Board of Education approves all consent agenda items, including agenda, minutes, personnel items, treasurer's report. Supported any questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. And information items. First up is the board policy P06320, purchasing second read. Yep, and I, that was a, obviously the one that I shared with you last month. And um, uh, just again with the, uh, the flexibility a little bit that's needed right now in all, and and it'll be another one I'm going to talk to you about as well. It's just, um, you know, the the again just to secure a bid on things right now is very difficult. Let alone two and three bids. So um, having that little extra flexibility certainly helps. Again, my full intent is always to get as many quotes or as many you know on a bid that we can. But as long as we're within the parameters of the federal guidelines for a little bit of flexibility on that so we can do some of these things. And there have been times in the past where that's been necessary to have that flexibility to, uh, we got to do something right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. know, I know situations crop up more often than, you know, we yeah. would like, something we'd like, but if they do, and then I know in the past it's been... Some emergency kind yeah, of stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Or the contractor is here doing this, and oh, by the way, But again, the, and the policy says that, you know, it, the, what hasn't been changed in the wording is the idea that we still try to secure three bids too. Mm -hmm. so. And then we'll revisit that again in action items down the, yeah. down the list there. Did, did Wayne from Neola, he was good with everything yep. here? Okay, no flag. <coughs> I think they just look at if it would be a law thing, right? They look at a federal policy to have for the federal permit, but um, it's listed typically in the different federal projects for what it is. You know, they follow our they will follow our board policy. Okay. But but they look to our policy to be the gold standard to yeah. which to hold us to. I don't want to like If it makes you feel any better, Nicole, I had Dorothy in there when we talked to the lawyer, so I had, <laughs> she was sitting next to me when we were talking to Mr. I. Marino from Troon, so. Dorothy, you felt comfortable with that, right? You double check yeah. with him, just to be sure. I, I assure you that before I make any of these moves, Dorothy has quizzed me a few times <laughs> about the purpose and where we're going with this, so. Which is good, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. process as we would do under this would be in compliance with Michigan's Empower laws and the C or CFR. So yep. Okay. Anything else on that? Administrative yep. reports. Mr. Mellor. All right, well, uh, first the, the tough one. Uh, I'm sure as you've all heard by now, we uh, had to make the decision to uh, cancel the varsity football season. Uh, it wasn't uh, something taken lightly.
unconscious with the low amount of especially the upper class and they went out. Uh, we didn't have enough lower class and they, they had enough experience that we didn't think it was fair nor safe for us to uh, participate at that level. So um, it's tough. Did away with a couple of the colors from the seventies. Not that they were bad, but the, the brown, the, the brown and orange stuff has kind of run its course. So. And then lastly, I just want to say a, a thanks to my custodial staff because of all the paint that's going on and all that, all the, the the dry ice blasting. They had to kind of wait a lot on some of the things, but boy, when they were able to jump into things, they jumped right into it. Um, you know, they, they they had to wait to do other things, but they got in the courtyard and cleared those up, and, and they, they when they had to work overtime. They During like when when Coach Madsen got the position, he was he was going around talking to students constantly. I can, I said I saw it myself. He talked to my son. Like he was he was going in talk to, to kids and and just and engaging their interest. And, and he went to kids back like he'd go to kids and say no. He'd go back to him again. He'd go back to him a third time. So I mean he you know I I really I, I think he really put in every effort possible. Not not just him, but I also think you know it's Coach Taylor, uh, Coach Lozon. I think they all. Does it look like numbers are 
slides. We kind of had enough probably to keep so. going next year. I think um, so. I think, and I think that's, the, that, again, that's, that's, if we can focus, focus on the JV, and they could probably have more success in that level because I, can, it's, I think it's disheartening if you bring up those kids and we try to do a varsity and they get annihilated because they're just not ready. And, you know, that's more disheartening and then you're more in danger of losing even more kids out of the program at that point. But I, 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 our A3 numbers right now are good. something out to the community. I don't sure. have a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the sooner the better, because there's already rumors flying around. And, you know. There was rumors flying around two weeks ago. <laughs> exactly. I, I understand that. And I, you know, I, I mean, I, I think it is. You know, I, I mean, and I understand it's football, and it, it's yeah. much different. We've canceled programs in the past. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to downplay any other things that we've canceled yeah. a lot. But it affects the cheerleaders and the fans. And they'll have a whole I, well, and that's the thing uh, that makes me, like, grandparents. Because, like, there's people yeah. that have been from either football games. Absolutely. And, and just everybody knows that this wasn't, like you said, a game of pride and no. So is there a chance that the band and cheer can do this for a JV game? Absolutely. JV, JV, 100%. JV. Yep. Like no, I already, I already mentioned to, to Ricky about doing JV games. So okay. Yeah, it's, it's and have you talked to the cheer coach? I have not. Okay. But, so Mitch, but, but Mitch, I think, did. I think Mitch reached out to her today and talked about some of the Things that they, in, in fact, uh, he was down seeing me this morning. I'm almost positive that he said he talked to Melanie already. So I think that's in place. And, and same thing. I just was wondering because the color guard's mother contacted me and she was like, well, what's my daughter going to do? No, no we're, we, right. we'll keep them active. stage.
Sanders? Board reports. We have uh, one thing on the agenda. First is the MASB delegate assembly. We need to identify two delegates and an alternative. So, is there anyone who plans on going? I'm going. To? You're going. Yeah. And I've been a delegate for past two, I believe. And I would like to continue if okay. that's okay. Okay. Um, no, I'm with somebody else. I'm going to Can't be announced. Yeah. I can think about going too. I don't know if you want to get with me and we'll figure it out. Okay. But it's, it's one of those. I have one thing. I just looked at my schedule today and it told me that the new events that are next week for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if my kids are going to be one. there or other work. So. so for certain, then Janice mm -hmm. will be a delegate. You'll be there. You'll be an alternate. Mm -hmm. And then and between, then yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was planning on going. So if you're going, you're probably going anyway? I'm probably going to go anyway, probably, yeah. Okay. I mean, unless you guys tell me that no one's going to come right. I don't but think like there's enough. Year, so there I'll actually I'll isn't an upper limit. I mean. I can be the alternate, too, if you want a for sure go. If you want to for sure go, okay. just I'll call it. Okay, I'll go. Okay. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know because I went last year. Welcome to go if you end up being able to go. And just because there's only two delegates and two alternates doesn't mean anybody else can't go. Everybody can go. I mean, right. we're yeah. all welcome to go attend. I mean, and some districts, have, and I believe back a long time ago, our whole board went one time. Yeah. You know, so. See it often. Was there, wasn't there something? I assume it would be for something like that, but I, I don't, don't know, know for sure. That was the yeah. I have one more for board reports, but does anyone else have anything they wanted to share? Yeah. Right. I wanted to just share a couple talking points from we. I thought we had a really good discussion last month about for our kind of board improvement. Workshop. It ended up being like a three-hour <laughs> conversation. I think it was pretty, pretty healthy for all of us as, as a theme. It was was really good. 
the, the couple things that you know, I've kind of latched on with trying to, to move forward here um, quickly is the, um, you know, first was we talked about maybe having some meetings in different buildings as the time comes so we could tour. So Al, I wanted to follow up you know, on that. What's that? Just traveling meeting. Yeah. Traveling meeting. Oh. Should go see the other schools and things like that. Um, showcase that. Uh, next was sending. Yeah. 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 That'd be the, the thought. So be ready, <laughs> field trips. Um, and then the next was sending cards to, to new hires and retirees. So um, I talked with Al a little bit earlier today, I was gonna put something together for all the new hires that we have that are starting with the school year. Just kind of a you know, welcome, welcome to the district. Um, move that forward if anyone else is interested. You know, I thought maybe we could try and rotate something like that or we could get a template that we could use and you know, with a little bit of you know, special customization that we had just to add so Phil did volunteer touch. to write the template too yeah yeah yep, yep. I'll, I'll take it and get us going um, the uh, the other thing that we, we talked about that I thought was was pretty um, uh, a really cool idea was rather than trying to get students to come to board meetings to engage we thought about putting ourselves out there and, and engaging with the students so I was going to talk to Michelle Landrum about um, seeing what we could do to arrange a rotation of some sorts you where like we go. That'd be awesome, yeah. That'd be perfect. Student council. Yeah, student council yeah. meetings, yeah. that, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Algonquin, too, they have student council. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm, <coughs> yeah. So I think the more we think about it, the more we start, we'll start somewhere. Or just put like we'll a template out going. there where we can sign up for different things and put yeah. it in a circle. Yeah, I think we could just start putting stuff on there if we'd like, because Chick-fil-A, I hadn't even thought of that, right? So as we get ideas. Yeah. And I know that we, during the school day, they tend to spread right. seminar, but mm -hmm. if we have like a list of the seven weeks or seven meetings, you know, like, yeah. you could always, you see them take a turn and tell right. them that's at each one, you know, or something like that. Yeah, I think that'd yeah. be a great idea. Yeah, just all of it engaging and rather than, you know, expecting everyone to come to us, put ourselves out there and, um, you know, engage in meaningful ways with the students. Um, Let's see, talked about the, uh, so, so board self-assessment, maybe if we touch on that one for a minute. We, there's a, a, a survey that we all talked about um, taking that MASB offers. It's a survey, it should take like 10, 15 minutes, we're told. It's a lot of questions. It's like maybe 80 questions because it's across a handful of dimensions and each one's got you know five to eight questions. The way it works is once one of us takes it, we have like basically a two week clock that everyone else has to take it. And then once we've all, once the last board member has taken it, Al and I get a report that, that we can review. So if we're all ready and we're all ready to stack hands now, I'll send out the link tomorrow so that way we all have it and we all just have to make the commitment to take it in the next two weeks. We'll send out a couple reminders too. Yeah, we'll, we'll track, yeah, I'll send out reminders. Um, okay. And Will you be able to see who has and who has not taken it? I, we I can, mean, I'm sure we can get that from MASB. Right. So I don't. You know, they yeah. want to send a reminder to, you know, the, the ones that are missing. You know? Yep, yeah, yeah. I don't think there's a dashboard like we'll be able to see, but. Right. We, you know, they'll, they'll let us know, I'm certain of that. And, uh, you know, just take it as best as you can. There's gonna be some ambiguity. It, it's like a one size fits all districts and obviously we're not all districts. Um, so some of it just go with what your gut says and then we'll talk it through as a group. Have and have special meetings to go over it so that you know, I think we so. understand where there were ambiguities and what yeah. we all thought. So. I think it deserves a little bit of time. So I'll send that out. Latos. Yeah. So <clears throat> now that Ryan uh, presented the football stuff, I, I usually I complain that I they steal all my thunder. That's one that I um, I'm glad that Ryan had to uh, address first. I, I just want to let the board know and and the community as well. And I think it's a good idea to put something out to the community. Um, the plan for next year will start tomorrow. This, this won't be something that we're gonna, um, you know, I, I, my full plan is to meet with Mitch, meet with the coaches, um, and 
talk about not only the, you know, we know what the issue is, right? It's getting kids out, but it's how, what are we gonna do? What's gonna inspire kids to come out? What types of things that we need to do? And most importantly, where, where our coaches need to be to get that program up and running. And I, I, I do agree 100% with what Ryan said because those coaches were in meeting with us, meeting with administration, talking about the things that they were, they wanted this season to go. They went into that scrimmage last week and kind of with the idea that even if it's going to be tight, we're going to get through and we're going to, we're going to run a varsity team this year. And they lost a couple of kids to injury during that. And, you know, I, like Ryan said, there is a safety issue that comes up when I'm, you know, when we're looking at bringing up ninth and 10th grade kids and running them out there against kids that are 17 and 18 years old. Um, I don't think it's a good idea. And so, but with that said, um, you know, it's not something that anybody wanted to do, but I think that it, what's important is that what we do going forward and make sure that that doesn't happen again next year. And um, I feel very confident the guys that we have doing that. I think they'll get us to where we need to be and it will be a focus. And like I said, I think that starts, like I said, tomorrow. That's not gonna be something that we'll wait till the spring and start playing. You know, it's gonna be uh, something that we're focused on all the way through. Does it impact other BWAC teams as well? Sure, it does. I mean, it does. Mitch made a call to the state, so just so you kind of know how that goes, because um, obviously when our numbers were a little bit lower to start out right from week one, um, we were in contact with our league schools, and Mitch kind of told them, we're going to try, we're looking to do this, this, and kind of gave them a step-by-step -step as to where we were at and knowing that it might be an issue. The, the real thing is when you cancel or that – the MHSA acknowledges you as canceling that season. So for example, what we did want to do is put some of the neighboring schools in jeopardy of not counting that game um, because that affects playoff points and those types of things. So it will be counted as a forfeit loss, which is a two to nothing score, I think is how they do it, but mm -hmm. it won't affect them in terms of their playoff points. So the schools that we play will get a win for that week. It won't be anything that will you know, affect them negatively. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and just another thing, and I, and I, I, I do want to confirm this, and I don't know that um, they will um, necessarily uh, take us. Th there's some things to work out with it, but uh, Mitch inquired today about our seniors um, because there's there's some things like okay, so we have three seniors that are out. Um, will they have opportunity to play somewhere else? What can we do for them here if not? And, um, this is at first brush that they could play JV this year. Um, that is not an MHSA rule that says that they cannot. It's just kind of always been understood that when you're a senior, you're on a varsity team. It's not necessarily a rule. Now, um, you know, my conversation with Mitch is let's look into that. We, we've had it happen before. We've had it, for example, um, an exchange student that came over that was a senior we that didn't really know the rules of basketball, we had him play JV just so he could be part of something. So it, 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 there's a precedent there, a little bit different situation, obviously. Did the other schools do that, or um, is it just basically an unwritten thing where they just don't do it? Right. It, it's a, yeah, it's pretty much an unwritten rule. Okay. That, that, so my, um, you know, my conversation with Mitch was talking about I would be in contact with and, and first of all, again, I want to confirm because this is just coming from a conversation with someone he had at the state level. Mm -hmm. We'll obviously get confirmation on that, but um, you know, I, I want to make sure that if we're going to send seniors to play a JV game, that the other school understands where we're at yeah, and that they know yeah. too going forward. Mm -hmm. So yes, it'll be it, that'll be covered as well. So um, possibly something we can do for them like that. And seniors play. I'll keep you posted on exactly how that pans out, but that was, I just found that out late, real late in the day today. So we've been in contact with the state on a few of those things. So trying to make things as good as we can for the kids. A um, couple other things to talk about. Uh, 
I, I did explain to you a little bit, and this kind, kind of comes from a conversation that I had with Jen way back at the beginning of this, uh, right before summer started, um, and, and maybe um, a couple of the other emails that we had sent across regarding food for free breakfast for our students. And we had, you know, the last couple of years, we've free lunch, free breakfast, and, and we knew that this was gonna go away. So um, we did have a lot of kids that took advantage of that program when it was free. And so what we did was I asked Steve Vellante, I got together with him and asked him to give me, price it out for us. So with the reimbursements that we get from the, from the feds and then and what we have with free and reduced and what it would cost to have people staffed in the morning to give breakfast or serve breakfast and we kind of came up with all these basically anything that would add to the cost because what happens is um, what money you don't have in food service would fall back on us into the general fund so potentially it could come out of the general fund to fill in that gap and I don't know what that would look like but it looks like the total cost and this was probably on the conservative side um, from our standpoint I think it would be cheaper than this but it was about fifty thousand dollars that would be the cost for the year um, to do breakfast that's not the general fund cost that's not necessarily okay, right not could be Well, El, Algonquin was definitely uh, the ones that you know had the most in terms of kids that took advantage of it. Sometimes the high school, the high schoolers won't probably eat it all unless it's free, and then they'll just if they're coming through and they'll grab something out of the cafeteria in the morning. But um, you know the numbers are up normally more than normal, right? When we're charging for it, obviously. Um, but yeah, the elementary took advantage. Well, I mean, so when we look at the cost of that, and you know, I mean, the hope would be that some of it would be captured in food service. Um, of course, we've always had trouble spending some of that food service money, but um, we've we've done some nice things with it. But I think that um, it would be a good use to get our kids fed as well out of that. I don't know how much it would cost over. Maybe maybe not at all. But we have to have, be willing to commit to that out of the fund balance, out of our, you know, general fund. Um, so I, I, I did want to bring it to you so, because um, we can we can get it up and running relatively quickly if, if we want to do that. I just want to open up for discussion, you know, for you guys and is talk there, a little bit about it. Is there any federal money <clears throat> out there? <clears throat> no, it, it, and I've kind of looked sharing and, and I'll continue to look because I, I did talk to um, I was up meeting with Jackie Hanton at the uh, community foundation and talking about because remember they used to do that fueling the future when right. we did the backpacks and that kind of stuff uh, unfortunately what happened was this is one where COVID's kind of hurt us a lot of those mm -hmm. programs went away because this stuff was free anyway and so now nobody's funded so so right now it's kind of a little bit of a maybe a void maybe they come back i certainly will continue to look for some of those funding sources the fund, funds went away there's a surplus somewhere for it to come back you, you would think and then there's other states that do pay for children's lunches and everything else and i don't see why with effort with maybe with the school boards and then like k-12 alliance and then approach the state about implementing that because if they care about students well-being and health So like I said, I will, um, you know, my, my thought on it is this, and I'll let you guys kind of go from there. Uh, I, I do think it's a benefit, a great benefit for a lot of our students. Um, you know, at that cost, I mean, we're not married to it forever. It, it, it would be a year commitment um, that I think we could do it. I, I don't think that it's something where, you know, things got tight couldn't do it or other funding sources didn't pop up. Um, 
you know, maybe next year we decide, yeah, we, we can't do it for a year, but I, I think for a year that we could probably do it, and I think we'd be okay doing it. Is this something you can implement right away, or is it something that has to get board approval over the next few weeks? Don't think we need board approval. Well, no, I don't think we would necessarily need board approval on it. Um, I will check. check. I, yeah, I, I will call Troon just to double check that because it is, you know, opening us up a little bit to the general fund, but I, I'll, I'll double check on that. I think we'd be okay. Um, talking to Steve by the time he got in order, we might not be able to start it for a few weeks down the road anyway, but I'll get you that answer before and then he can do what he has to to put the order in if, if we're kind of, if you guys want me to go in that direction. need to publicize it too. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Okay, let me... Door okay. In a budget amendment? Yep. Want me to approve it? Yeah. Dorothy, do you know, like maybe off the top of your head, where we're sitting with food service in terms of money? still want people to apply for that, right? hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. We need all those. Yeah. You mean valuable? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very much well, so. Well, this investment, I remember a few years back when we were talking about having a breakfast in the classroom, thing at the elementary school, and what it was going to, there was a grant for it also, but about that to the board was that the, the school lunch that students are served, which I pay the school lunch, is the only thing that kid is going to eat today. That's the only thing that kid's going to eat today. I grew up, I had breakfast before I went to school, I had lunch at school, and I had with lunch, it was like whatever, and we had supper at night. That's not the case anymore, and it's, and it's very prevalent. I think the idea that federal government stepped up and said, hey, every kid eats for free. I think that's the best idea ever. And the states that have decided to take that on and do that, I think that's, uh, that's applaudable. Um, our legislature should look at including that in a, in a budget and needs to be contacted about that. And people like Mr. Lowers and uh, Jacob Lawyer are going to need to be contacted about that to rattle some chains to because finally, the last couple of years now, the state has actually cut loose the purse strings a little bit. You know, yep. We went for a long time in the middle 2000s where we were being funded at five years ago. The rates. Uh, yeah. right to, uh, even 10 years ago, we were being funded at five years ago funding level. And I spoke to a legislator at the time and I said, excuse me, but nothing that I buy today costs same that it did in 2005. You got to help us. And to which I was told you just need to figure it out. So unfortunately, he's not in the legislature anymore. But you know, um, no. But something does need to be figured out. And especially, you know, if a kid's coming to school and they're hungry, uh, they can't focus on learning if they're hungry. And so, um, you know, young people, old people, and sick people are the people they're supposed to be taking care of the most because they have the least to say and they have the most to lose. And so um, I think this is a great idea. It's a good, very good step. So that's it. Okay, I'll move forward with that and I'll keep you guys posted on how that unfolds. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> just a quick update on the pro projects that we have that are in progress. Um, if you peeked over there on the way in or came in that way, they are putting the ro new roof on Flame Tremble and 
that was one we didn't know that we'd quite fit in this summer, but we did. And so we're left with just Bellside's roof and that's uh, that and the units that we have to do. So that's our last one and we're out of the roof business for a while, thankfully. Um, are, are there any parts of that building we need to stay out of? Over there? Yeah. No, okay. you're good. No. You might have here a few footsteps yeah, up there, okay. but you'll be right. okay. Yeah. Um, lighting project, I believe, starts up next week, tomorrow. So every light in every building will be swapped out over the course of probably over oh, the next few months, I'm sure. Um, talk to those, uh, talk to the company. They are all about the work in the late shift and work in second shift and just so there's less of a distraction as they can be but we're gonna it's gonna be bright I mean and I, we're talking our gyms I, I don't know if you've been down to the gym and watched a sporting event lately but I always knew it was bad and I always <laughs> thought it was kind of like boy it seems like really dull and Evan I'm gonna ask you on this one we talked to the guy and what did he tell us that it's almost in terms of competition gyms So it's gotten they're they're rough, but yeah, it's gonna be bright. And the then bright that future. that bright future, and it does include uh you know the outdoor lighting that we had talked about and the lighting of the parking lots and um you know at Algonquin when you come out of there and they have the you know it, it it'll make a difference and it'll be you know it's gonna be and then with the white walls out here it's gonna probably be real bright out there. So uh, well, and a lot of the, a lot of the lighting that's being replaced was was done. Oh, it has. I think I think uh, technology's come a long way, and I think uh, lighting has been part of that too. So I think it's going to be nice. Um, and then, of course, like I said, we've got the. Um, if you drove around here, we've patched up the parking lot best we can. Uh, we know that that's just a band-aid on things. Did find out some good news um, when they came out and looked at the lots. Now this lot is going to need entire redo. It's going to have to be ripped out and ripped down, and you know that's that's pretty costly. Algonquin and Millside, um, they think that they could get through it if they got to it quickly enough within the next year or two. They think they can do just a coating on it, a topping on it, and probably buy us ten years of it. But that would be a nice way to kind of push that out. This one, it's gone too far we're, we're gonna have to do something quick but you know you're talking about probably a lot this big with point tremble and wrapped this back I mean you're probably close to a million dollars you know so it's uh, um, that'll be a big one that'll be a whole year's worth of sinking fund money right there but it's got to happen soon we patched mm -hmm. patched some holes but they don't last so but I think we kept everybody out from getting flat tires we hit the spots that we thought we had to so I think we'll be good for the rest of the school year, but at some point that's on the list. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I wanted to talk to you about, and I, I'm not, I think you guys know this by now, I'm not all about changing board policy, but I am trying to make things more make sense to us. And so I talked to you about the bid one last time. Another one's come up with purchasing, and this one's one that I think just kind of is dated the policy and I think we really need to look at it so um, the harder and harder it is to get bids because um, people are like you know we have a sealed bid process right so someone has to come in with a sealed bid and send a sealed bid in we've got to have it at this time it's got this deadline um, more and more companies have inquired about can I send those electronically and our policy does not allow that but these policies were probably written well before technology was placed. So again, Dorothy and I contacted Troon for their opinion on it. Um, what they told us was, yes, you can, and you, you can accept electronic bids. Um, the idea is there has to be some kind of a mechanism or some kind of a, something, a, a procedure that we have in place to guarantee that those bids have not been open prior to getting here, that they have not been shared out once they're here. Um, a lot of internal control stuff, it sounds like. 
um, but indeed we can't accept them. So my thought was this, if, and I'll talk to Evan about how that could look in terms of, you know, do we have a certain email account that's strictly for bids, you know, whatever the case is, and if we could have some kind of a mechanism to make sure that we have secured bids, um, would we be willing to accept electronic bids? And so that will be that would be a change to our policy. So my thought was once I get with Evan and we talk a little bit about how that might look, I would bring that policy to you for a first read in September and kind of follow the same process that we did with uh, the other one. So something to think about. I'll send you the policy. I'll send you what I think we can do and then uh, we could talk about it a little bit more at the September meeting. Okay. All right. That's all I got for you. All right. Thank you. Any visitor requests? No. None? Okay. First up is our two action items. The wood <coughs> room equipment and flooring. Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion the board accepts the bid and approves the purchase of the weight room equipment and flooring from Rogers Athletic Company in the amount of one hundred and fifteen thousand five hundred and ninety seven dollars and thirty cents. Supported. Moved and supported. Any questions, comments? Certainly, if you have any, I, I did ask Chris to come tonight. Um, if you notice, and I, and I think it's worth pointing out and important to point out that that is not on paper the lowest bid. However, it's the lowest bid for the equipment that we asked to get bid on. It also includes a floor and it also includes installation, which is something that the other bid lacked. And, um, you know, Chris is, we've talked quite a bit about this. Um, I, I think that we're getting the best equipment that we can in terms of what it is that we want and what fits our weight room. I don't know, Chris, if you want to talk a little bit about just kind of where we're at. And yeah, a lot, a lot of things went into it. I know you guys were talking about the bid process. Part of the bid process was, was this, too. We went out to bid. I think, thanks, Evan. I know he's behind the screen here. <laughs> One of, the, one of the things that we had talked about, so, you know, as, um, you know, it, it's tough, again, to book people to come do anything and to get things ordered and equipment-wise. And so we've, uh, when we sat down, Evan, Chris, and Mitch and I sat down and talked about, all right, so when can we have this weight room where it's just, where, where we, you know, got a time frame where these guys can work. And... Uh, Hopefully, we're, we, we've kind of locked it in, and now it's just a matter of logistically figuring out. But we looked at Christmas break, got two weeks when no one's in the building. If we can get the equipment ordered with a delivery date, get the flooring part organized, we're ripping the floor out and get that all set, and then lo and behold, get rid of what's in the weight room. It take a little bit of organizing, but at the same point, I think that two-week window at Christmas would be a real good place to start. Hopefully, we can get it up and working by then. So we'll be working with, if approved tonight, we'll uh, work with, you know, I'll talk to Chris and Evan. We'll make sure we get it lined up. So, so. Were, were you guys able to get better pricing from Rogers by way of the three bid attempts, or <laughs> not? Did their pricing stay the same? There's pretty, pretty close to the yeah. same. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for yeah, serving thanks for me. Doing. Oh, no problem. I appreciate what the board's doing and the help. And I wish Al was at uh, Dennis, though, because I just want to keep it listed. 
I have his number. I have, I have his. I have his number. I can. I can. There you go. Yeah. Chicken sandwich for a weight bench, right? Yeah, fair enough. Chick Fil A bench. That's right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that passes. And last but not least, is our board policy. Would anyone like to make a motion? A uh, motion that the Board of Education approve the updates of board policy CO6320 purchasing as presented. Support it. Any support it? Any further comments or questions? I think all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes. Motion to adjourn. Oh, not yet. Quick closed session.